Okay, so we got a 383 uh, stroker motor here. A couple of notable things about a 383. Uh, we have a longer stroke crankshaft, and so what happens is the connecting rod and piston, they have a, a wider throw. One of the things that we have to do on this thing is we have to actually relieve the block. If you look at the edge of the block here, you can see that we've had to preassemble this thing and we've had to do some relieving in here. And the reason we had to do that is simply because the connecting rods will actually hit the block. So you can see that we've done quite a bit of relieving in here. This one here, we've gone in and cut. And the reason that that is cut like that is simply because when the crankshaft rotates, because we have such a, a wide throw or sway on this rod, it was actually hitting the block. The connecting rod was contact. We had to relieve the pan, the uh, pan rail area because the connecting rod was actually interfering with that. So if you actually turn this engine over, you can see that the connecting rod is going to come very close to that. We'll take a look at this here. The connecting rod's coming around and we'll put that right there in that area where that relief is. And you can see that the reason we had to relieve that is simply because <laughs> the longer stroke creates a much wider sway on the rod. Now, everything on the bottom of this motor has been torqued. This engine's been balanced. We've got aftermarket scat rods in here. You, you may be wondering why there's yellow paint on everything. The yellow paint is simply because um, when we're working on uh, you know, multiple engines at once, you walk away from this thing and you might not remember that you torque something. So being uh, dyslexic that I am, if I walk away and I work on another motor for a day or two, if I'm waiting for parts or whatever, I walk up to that thing and I'm like, did I torque that? If I, if I look and I see these yellow marks on all of these, I know that after I torqued everything, I marked them. And so it, it's just a, just a double check for, for me that I personally like to use and it helps me to remember uh, you know, what I did. Um, also on this engine, we had this engine balanced and there's a couple things I want to show you. Um, with the connecting rods, they're going to make all the watt rods weigh the same. So what they do is they take the lightest connecting rod and they match all the other rods to that by removing material from the other rods because everything has to weigh the same. So if you look at these rods here, you can see right here where they actually shaved some material off of that rod. They didn't have to take really anything off of that one. Didn't take anything off of that one. But if you look at this one here, you can see oh, they, they, they ground the top of the rod. They're actually removing weight from those connecting rods. And here's a couple up front here. We'll rotate this around. And you can see on both of these, they had to take a pretty good amount of material off of those in order to get this thing to uh, balance. The idea is we want the rotating assembly, the, pis the, uh, the piston down in here, the connecting rod, the weight of these two piston and rod assemblies has to be equal to these counterweights over here that are opposite it. In some cases, the counterweights are too heavy, and they have they actually take a drill bit and they remove material from the counterweights. Um, my buddy uh, Brian, that did the balancing on this, I was actually there when he was working on this crank, and he said that the rear uh, counterweight on this crank was significantly heavy. <laughs> so if you look at this, it's like, whoa! Look at all the material they took out of there. They had to actually drill quite a bit of material out of that throw because the throw weighed a lot more than the piston and rod assemblies. Balancing is really important, especially when you have aftermarket components like connecting rods and aftermarket pistons. You're mixing and matching a stroker crankshaft with that's made by SCAT or Eagle, uh, connecting rods that are made by uh, some other manufacturer, whether it's GM or or Eagle or whoever, these happen to be scat rods, when you mix and match components from different manufacturers, um, the chances that that thing is going to be balanced uh, is uh, you got a better chance of getting struck by lightning on a sunny day. It's just not going to happen, especially when you're building a stroker type engine. It is absolutely mandatory that you get this thing balanced, um, not only so it won't vibrate, 
but we're going to do a performance balance because we want to be able to turn very high RPMs. The idea is um, a performance motor has balancing that is within a gram. Everything is equally weighed within about the weight of a dollar bill, which is very, very close. Um, so again, balancing is important. Uh, all of your specifications on this motor are very important. Um, it's clear that we have rod side clearance here. You can see that movement there. If we and we're going to check this with a feeler gauge, but I just want to show you the movement because very important that everything is able to move down here and has clearance. So we've got plenty of rod side clearance. Everything's been torqued. Everything has been clearanced um, so that nothing is going to hit. And of course, the clearancing has to be done before the short block is assembled. We have to pre-assemble it check all the clearances, mark the areas that are hitting and go back in, take it back apart, take a die grinder and clearance everything and then clean it up and put it back together and make sure that everything's hitting. So it, it's quite a process to build a stroker. Um, it's not just a matter of buying a longer stroke crank and a different set of pistons and slapping it together. There's a reason why this uh, stroker motor is $5,000 as opposed to, you know, a plain Jane 350 that you can get for 1500 to 2000 depending on what's done to it. So uh, it's kind of a big deal uh, to build a stroker, but boy, I'll tell you, the power increase that you get is incredible. Um, this motor here, probably in the area of 400 to 425 horsepower uh, at the wheels. This is going to have a set of RHS heads. These cylinder heads here are going to go on it. So it's going to be uh, quite a motor and this is one of the things that we're going to talk about too is when you build a performance motor it's really important that you stay away from factory casting heads because uh, basically for a lack of a better word they suck. Um, I don't know any other way to put it. You really don't want to use a factory type head for any kind of performance on a small block Chevrolet especially. So. Uh, very important. Just a couple of tidbits that's important to understand about clearancing, and I hope this helps. Rawr.